four and a half mile road, Gatineau in Quebec hosts the 12th round of the championship. And just as it was at Darlington, Leonid Roderick wins the Delano Pole Award, and Arto Kakinen starts on the outside of the front row. Roderick doing his championship bid a lot of good, despite the fact that he hasn't won a race yet. Luciano Savarol and Rossini in row two. Clavino looking for a good weekend. She needs one. Kurt Pliskin, good run in his light coil. The Alert Boys have been quick all weekend. Scott Bates and Gaspar Souza were quick in practice. And there are their teammates, Ian Cooper, Zelda Ashby. Raketa, good effort in 14th. Zach Duff in, in with a promoter's option. Kuznetsov looking strong as well. Jacob Card, one of his home races. Anderson looking strong. Scott Faulkner makes a series debut. Two independent trophy cars near him. And there you have the other two independents on the outside of rows 12 and 13, Humphreys and Quackenbush. Quackenbush, this is technically his home race. Alcier in this race as a promoter's option, her only scheduled run this year. Morgan Le Fay in as well. Uh, she is a regular in the Team Canada series. Uh, Joe Olenek starting near the back, and then here we get to the massive amount of grid penalties. Dan McKay, of course, uh, had problems in qualifying. Devereaux sent to the back. Dwyer sent to the back. Nasova sent to the back for infractions at Darlington. Davenport and Atkins crashed into each other in qualifying, and neither wanted to take the blame for it. The stewards felt that both of, the, that, uh, both of them were at fault, and they sent both to the back. Roderick in car number four leads the, gets a pretty good start, it looks like. Rossini flubs it big time. Pliskin is trying to force it three wide already. I don't quite know what he thinks he's going to accomplish with that. Oh, they're beating and banging already. They're doing bizarre things back there. And let's see if they make it through turn one cleanly. I don't think they did. Oh, let's. Didn't look like it was that big of a uh, kerfuffle as it has been before. But look at Luciano Savarol in that black and green car, the first of the black and green cars. Uh, is making some headway, trying to get by Kekin. Let's see what Pliskin was doing here. Now, uh, this is a pretty mindless move into turn one. Um, right, I don't know quite what. Oh, he gets into the side of Stoiler, Ian Cooper, Greg Woodard. And that was a bona fide brainless maneuver, and that could have been a lot worse than it was. Pliskin, whoa, he's offline. Oh, he gets touches with Raketa, and it looks like Quackenbush and Kingston tripped over each other. And Pliskin only has himself to blame because that was pretty foolish. Here is Scott Faulkner in the Renisker car. Jacob Card has, um, and uh, Faulkner got into a very big crash at Cariala during qualifying for that race at the Cariala Grand Prix. Faulkner is, uh, this of course, this is his first start. He's also a regular in the Team Canada Series and he bears a striking resemblance uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the late Scott Hamilton. Uh, in fact, both of them from the uh, same part of Ontario. Uh, here is uh, Chris Johans, car number 12, having a great start to his race. He needs a good run here today. Here is Kevin Dwyer, who is absolutely flying through the field already, and we haven't even gotten to the end of lap one. Dwyer rocketing through the field, Devereaux being a bit more patient. I think Adrian Devereaux uh, knows that he's got the horsepower to get by a lot of these cars on these very long straightaways. Now there's Joe Lenick to go, oh, whoa, whoa, Devereaux into the back of Lenick, and those two got together in, last, in the last race. Oh, and Lenick in trouble behind him. Devereaux was... Had, uh, didn't have too many kind things to say about Joe Olenek's driving uh, at Darlington, but I think he also was making reference to the fact that Olenek had a slower car and should have gotten out of the way. Devereaux just turned him there. I don't think there was any intent to miss that at all. And and somebody nailed the back of the 23 car very hard. It looked like the 10 of Yulian Nasova, and it looked like Tom Moore got a piece of that. And yes, that is the front end of the of uh, Nasova's car gone. And uh, Tom Moore got some damage in that as well. Here's Quackenbush in the 34. Uh, the Gravity Racing Car, owned, of course, by Packer Carroll, who is driving for Manicor Engineering. Uh, Quackenbush uh, not exactly having the best opening lap. He is going backwards in a hurry. Here is Arto Kekin, the Finn, and Leonid Roderick, both of which former teammates. At, oh, Roderick off in one. And you can, see, you can see that a lot of people struggling with brake wear here because, of course, you have a lot of very long straights here. These cars are absolute... These cars go way, way too fast, probably, in the straights, though. Um, well, actually, I don't know. I think a lot of this uh, high speeds in the straight and low speeds in the corners type of racing really helps, as you can see through some of these twisty bits here, as Scott Bates makes a pretty good move. But... Um, 
What I was saying earlier is these cars maybe go a bit too fast considering you have these undulations right here. And um, uh, some people are a little worried that uh, these cars might be catching a little bit of air as there is a more uh, typical pass through that particular corner to see Alessandro Rossini make as Kekkonen now is swinging it wide. With all these high speeds that everyone's making, uh, really does put a lot of wear on the brakes when they get to the braking zones and that's led to a lot of uh, off-track excursions and the fact that it rained this morning I don't think is helping that as Roderick because you see he takes the lead back because we're on board the Alona car driven by Melanie Klavina who needs a good race she drove this paint jump to a victory in the round of France earlier in this year and the, uh, the Swiss sophomores had a very up and down year uh, scored two wins early in the season it hasn't really uh, had too many good results to smile about a lot of pace though she definitely has the pace to score another win, and Clavino really looking for a way around Kekkonen, or rather a way to catch up to him, I think, first. Uh, as Roderick and Kekkonen taking different lines through this part of the track. Oh, Kekkonen has got to have a run on him. There comes Arto Kekkonen, almost squeezing his former teammate off the road. Uh, Kekkonen really wants a win badly because the Gesslers don't quite look like they have the same speed they did last year. Um, but I think part of that is they don't have the same luck they did last year as Roderick has a better run throughout the last corner and out of this main straight here. Clavino all over the back of Kekkonen in the nine and she's going to have a run on him as they come down into turn one and uh, where's fifth place because the top four have pulled way away from the rest of the field. Uh, one, I don't think anything's gone wrong with the fifth place car, Chris Johans. I just think he is uh, currently stacking. There he is. There's, uh, that's the 55 way in the background. So that uh, so Ashby has gotten by the 12 car. And we're looking at Carlos Arqueta, one of the cat sibs, car number 14, ahead of Jacob Card in the 6. Card, who has not been terribly comfortable with his car all weekend long. Uh, Card and uh, the 64 car there, Scott Faulkner nearly got into another brush with each other, so, uh, in, uh, oh, whoa, Zach Duff is off in the 77, and whoa, that was a, that was a monumental crash there, as Chris Davenport in the 84 now goes off for about the 84th time this weekend, but Duff went off on his own, that took, I think that took everyone by surprise, including myself, as Kurt Pliskin has already pitted the 16 car. Probably to fix some of the damage that he inflicted on his own vehicle uh, through his own lack of spatial awareness. And it looks like the 46 car has already stopped as well. And they've been having brake problems all weekend. It's not what you want here is Dan McKay off, off the track. Dan McKay actually uh, set a time in qualifying outside of the 110%. But uh, since he had so many offs in qualifying, he... Uh, but he was still allowed to start because, of course, he was within 110% of the fastest time in practice. Uh, Dan McKay's fastest lap of well over four minutes uh, around here in qualifying uh, because he, of course, threw it into the gravel trap. As we're looking at Zelda Ashby having a pretty good weekend so far in sixth place. Kevin Dwyer, three laps. He's already carved his way up to 22nd last time by the stripe. And now he's going to have a run on Axel Andersen. So Kevin Dwyer really flying through this field. As Scott Bates has a run on Rossini. Nope. That was a bit optimistic, but uh, that could have been worse. Uh, he's going to be able to rejoin. And uh, uh, Scott Bates on a, in a bit of a... Whoa, what are Quiggles Jr. and Humphreys doing? And that's interesting. Um, anyways, looking at, uh, here's Cameron, oh, Cameron Taylor into the back of Packer Carroll, a uh, bit of a, uh, not a huge amount of, um, well, looked like, uh, the 26 car may have had a bit of braking problems there, a lot of cars have had that, but I do believe both those guys are Ohio residents. Cameron Taylor driving for Team Star USA is Melanie Klavano, first of the leaders to hit the pit lane in car number two, the first of the four leading cars. And they have well, they have pulled well away from the rest of the field. So, looks like a lot of the slower cars that have had good qualifying runs have actually, in effect, allowed Roderick, Kekkonen, Savaral, and Klavino to really pull away from the field. As you see uh, Kekkonen get around Savaral there. So, um, really, uh, if all the fast cars have qualified right next to each other at the front, this might be more than just four cars here. But uh, that wasn't the case, even though had Devereaux and... 
Dwyer now gotten grid penalties. This might have been a six-car battle up at the front, so maybe it's time to uh, look at uh, changing that, perhaps. But uh, here is... Oh, Salvarol and Kakanen, that's not where you want to be leaning on each other, boys, at about 180 miles an hour. I don't think that's quite a good idea. Um, but um, then again, they're driving these cars, and I'm not. As Salvarol makes the move stick and gets around Kakanen cleanly, but Kakanen's going to have him back. Coming into the uh, chicane here. Not really a bus stop chicane. It's just kind of a, a left-right as uh, still side-by-side side around here. These two aren't giving up. Just for a second, we're not even halfway through the race. Uh, we're not even at we're uh, not even at one quarter distance yet. And Kakinen and, and Savarel really leaning on each other as Roderick pits the four. So the Aperture Science Volpe hits the pit lane, the orange Aperture Science Volpe. But Kakinen and, and Savarel are still in the racetrack. Uh, they are going to use every bit of um, every bit of the life they have in those tires and uh, as much fuel as they've got. And uh, Kakanen uh, doing a good job here defending defending the lead here as Luciano Savarol is having fits with him. Johans, it looks like most everyone else behind the leading cars has hit the pit lane, but I don't see Ian Cooper in here. He must still be on the racetrack. Triple seven car. Bates and Henton are in the pit lane as well. Henton having a, a reasonable weekend. Peter Short looking at the 22 car. He stay. Oh, whoa. I think he stayed out a bit too long. Melrose Racing Team has been trying some uh, insane pit strategies. They nearly worked in Wales. Taub, I think, would have gotten 11th had uh, he not crashed out, but that didn't work for Peter Short at all. Looked like he just had a um, right front go out there as Ben Atkins. Uh, ben Atkins has been kind of like Chris Davenport this weekend. Uh, he's been off the track probably more than he's been on it. Uh, maybe he's trying out rallying, perhaps, the former Dash Cup champion. Is Melanie Claveno trying to put in a couple of hot... Oh, whoa, 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 no, 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 that's... It's all wrong, Melanie got that last corner all wrong. Melanie tried to put in, trying to put in a couple of hot laps. Is Morgan Le Fay in the 49 is coming into the pits because uh, she was pinned for speeding in the pit lane, actually. And... Um, there is the 9 and the 5. They are uh, pitting from 1st and 2nd, obviously. But Clavin, I wanted to put in a good outlap in order to make up some time in clean air as Scott Stoidler pits the 13. And they, the uh, team crew over there doesn't look in like they're in any hurry. So he's got a definite mechanical problem. Big shame for Stoidler. As you see, Roderick holds on to the lead as Kekkonen and Savarol are going to filter in 2nd and 3rd. And Roderick is... Oh, whoa, no, oh, that's cold tires there. Roderick uh, bitten a little bit by cold tires, and uh, maybe the painted line there as uh, Anita's went straight off and right back on, and that's going to cost him the lead as Arto Kakinen goes right on through. The Finn and that silver and blue nine uh, takes over the lead as Kevin Dwyer into the top ten, lap seven. Kevin Dwyer is on the charge in the gold Myasoft car number 8. Kirk Pliskin coming into the pits again in car 16. Uh, this is not turning out to be a very good weekend for him. Uh, even though it started off very well, it's coming unraveled in a hurry as you see the running order on the left side that actually shows that this man, Gaspar D'Souza, runs in seventh place and no time penalty yet for Adrian Devereaux for that contact with Joe Olenek. I'm a little surprised at that, but um, perhaps that'll be uh, addressed after the races. Gaspar D'Souza actually, the winner at Darlington, surprise winner I should point out, here's Adrian Devereaux in car number seven who is uh, being shown as you see there in 11th, or 13th, sorry. Um, Adrian Devereaux in the 7 car, really hunting down um, one of the cats that was right in front of him. Um, as, oh, I think those Kuznetsov just went off the track and let him go by, and Adrian Devereaux scoots well away. Now, I'm a little surprised they haven't thrown the time penalty uh, at Devereaux, but they have been making some rather interesting calls up in race control lately. Uh, and I wonder if they're just going to let that, um, if they're just going to mull over that decision because, oh, Roderick, whoa! 
Now, we were talking about breakaway earlier, and that might be a clear uh, clear sign of it because Roderick well, goes off the same, same place he went off earlier. Thought earlier was cold tires. That might just be brake problems. And uh, we're getting reports that the 26 car, Cameron Taylor, no fourth gear. And that's not good here because um, uh, up until recently, Team Star USA still had a four-speed transmission. Most of the field has five. Uh, I think just about everybody does. Uh, I think the only car that doesn't might be the Midnight, which still has only four, but that car is uh, quite a bit of torque to it, we understand. As Kuznetsov pits the 15 car. Don't know why, but Cameron Taylor out of the race. Gearbox problems. As uh, he's not just... Oh, whoa! Yep, Roderick's got some problems with the... Uh, brakes on that car and funny to know that uh, funny to note that just a couple of years ago uh, Volpe racing team had one of the had one of the better uh, brake cooling systems in the field clearly not the case anymore as Roderick pits again this is scheduled as that's Dan McKay in the 95 who's apparently gone off track um, in that car so here's Arto Kekin and Luciano Sabra all resuming their battle from earlier uh, Kekinen in the nine ahead of the Brazilian Savarol really looking to win again. He's uh, been uh, very, very upbeat since his win in Russia, whereas Kekkonen, uh not really sure how Kekkonen feels about not having won a race yet this year, but um, it's really hard to get a clear answer out of him. Is Dan McKay off in the last corner in, in the Maximus car? Dan McKay, uh, we think his future is pretty safe for the rest of the year, even though Maximus, there has been reports that they may actually miss one of the upcoming races to prepare for Indianapolis as... Um, right, <laughs> Ben Atkins having um, a bit of an adventure today as Ebenezer Quiggles Jr. I think might have been caught off guard and followed him off track. Now here's another car that was uh, that had uh, went off earlier that we missed. That was Greg Woodard who spun off in the first turn, but he's there. Oh, Packer Carroll's blown up the Manicor. Or rather the Manicor has blown up on Packer Carroll. Not to say that Packer Carroll detonated that car on purpose. <laughs> Packer Carroll has always gone fairly well here. He has his only career win at this track, driving for Volpe. I think he's... Oh, no! Ashby's thrown it off. Staying out long, but I was saying about Packer Carroll, he's always gone very well here. Shame to see him out. As uh, Michael Humphreys in the zero car... Oh, we got everybody making mistakes now. Or rather, um... Yeah, I don't. I think Michael Humphreys uh, might not have realized how much brake he had left there, or just left it way too late. Either way, he keeps going. Whoa! Dan McKay way off course. Oh, he's into the tires! Oh, Roderick happened to be there! That's a big hit for Roderick! And that is... He's definitely out of it, and Dan McKay, I would imagine he is too. That is what you call dumb luck! Because I think had Dan McKay uh, missed that tire wall, Roderick would still be going! But that means, of course, two of the four leading cars have run into problems. The only two that are left are the two that are putting on the best show so far. Arto Kakinen and Luciano Savaral. So, uh, for the sake of having a good battle to the end, I think we should uh, be thankful that, they're, that the two of them are still running. Um, battle for the win, that is. As we've got a great battle there but in the uh, uh, lower half of the top ten, it looks like, between uh, Gaspar Souza, Jacob Card, Melanie Clavino, Adrian Devereaux, and Kevin Dwyer. Uh, again, no penalty yet for Adrian Devereaux. Curiouser and curiouser, it seems. As uh, there is... Dwyer having a run on Clavino, who is struggling with the fact that the rear end of that car is all torn to pieces. These cars don't really have a lot of downforce anyway, and uh, uh, when you when you uh, smash up a car at the rear end so that it has even less, that's going to be a uh, extreme handful, uh, especially for someone like Melanie Clavino, who has been um, uh, rather tentative in traffic, uh, I've noticed throughout the course of the year. And uh, that appears to be more evidence of that, as Gaspar Souza in car number 60 is trying to hold off Kevin Dwyer. Dwyer leaves his braking really late. That's a move that says, you let me through, son, or we are both crashing. And Gaspar Souza, being a very smart, sensible Portuguese man, lets Kevin Dwyer through. Both of them are legitimate contenders for the Master Cup Championship, especially to Souza, who has two wins, and Dwyer won at Sweden, remember. Here's Adrian Devereaux, who also has two wins, going by Jacob Card, who has one win to his name, but that came last year in a uh, rather surprising sub in a rather surprising uh, race where he substituted for Packer Carroll. But Adrian 
Devereaux in the seven car. Really looking for, uh, well, now there is the 64 of Faulkner, who has gotten some damage from earlier. Uh, is not really getting in the way. Uh, he's being a very courteous back marker, which that's always nice to see, especially after some of these shenanigans at Darlington is Luciano being a bit aggressive there. And, uh, now I don't understand this. Uh, if Faulkner's giving you the whole racetrack to go by him, go by him! I don't see why you're holding behind him as long as you are, unless you're saving fuel in the draft, which Luciano Sabaral is not the type of driver to enjoy doing that. Faulkner even goes off track to let him go by. Uh, courtesy is clearly one of Scott Faulkner's uh, best attributes as... You know, we've seen this about uh, 25 times at least throughout practice. Chris Davenport spinning. Uh, at least he didn't hit anything this time. Uh, Kevin Dwyer and... Uh, whoa! That's Rossini way off track. In the three car, Rossini, who uh, led the championship earlier in the year. And I would say Rossini is probably uh, Adrian Devereaux's biggest threat to the uh, for the Drivers' Championship at the moment as Jacob Card pits the six. The number six, Lennard, as oh, Rossini blocking Devereaux here. And then that is three cars very, very close together and no contact uh, between them at all. And Devereaux is going to have a run on Rossini. He's going to at least try to clear to Souza here. And uh, so Adrian Devereaux, oh, this might not be a good place to get by Gasper to Souza. De Souza might have a run back on him. And he does look at Rossini, slides it wide. Rossini very, very wide. And Devereaux, he's going to lose three places right there. So Rossini, defending very aggressively, loses more ground, I think, than he would have if he uh, maybe played it a bit more uh, circumspect. <laughs> as Kekkonen still leads in the number nine car. His lead is extended by the fact that Luciano Savaral was saving fuel or uh, just not making any rush to get by Scott Faulkner. But we're oh, Frank Azure off again. He's been, uh, they've been having a lot of problems with the brakes on this car all weekend long. And really, these guys need something good to happen to them. This is their last Independence Trophy run of the season, but do still have the special events coming up, and they need to qualify for those if they're going to win the Independence Trophy. No doubt about it, they have to. As here is Kevin Dwyer and Adrian Devereaux doing battle for position now. This is, I do believe, for third, and yes, they're going to split Faulkner. These two started way in the back, remember, and they have absolutely flown through the field. Uh, had they not gotten grid penalties, Dwyer would have been on the front row with Lean and Roderick, and Devereaux would have been starting in fourth. But uh, as it is, they started in 38, in uh, 38th and 39th. And you can tell that these two clearly have uh, two of the better cars on the racetrack at the rate that they have absolutely come through traffic, pulled away from traffic, and are actually the fastest two cars on the racetrack, even quicker than the race leader. That should say something about. Um, the determination of these two guys, but they're running each other fairly clean, even though Devereaux did run uh, poor Joe Lennick into the wall on the first lap, and I can't imagine Team Star USA is terribly thrilled about that, and oh no, no, Kevin Dwyer has just tripped over the lap car of Claire Aussier, what on earth, what on earth was Aussier even doing there in the 98 car? Claire Aussier in the 98, she is uh, one of Lynx Racing's Team Lights drivers, and uh, I, I don't know what she was doing there, to be quite honest with you. She had a problem with the car. There's plenty of room to pull the car off into. I don't know why she chose to put it right in the middle of the racing line, going into the fastest part of the track, pretty much. That just, that was an outrageous maneuver for the, um, for the uh, Montreal native. Uh, and there's a lot of damage to the front of Dwyer's car, and Devereaux, I think, has flat spotted those tires. I would imagine he'll be in... Uh, actually, this is about the time that they're scheduled to pit anyway. So, that might not be so bad for Adrian Devereaux, even though he has lost a bit of track position as Greg Woodard into the back of Quiggles Jr., and around goes the Sealander. At FPO Incorporated, they're based uh, on the other side of the country, really in, uh, Van in uh, the British, in uh, the Vancouver area in British Columbia and uh, Quiggles Jr. 
doubt he and the Scam Corp team are going to be terribly thrilled with that maneuver from uh, Greg Woodard, who uh, uh, probably should know better than that. But um, anyways, here's Chris Johans. They haven't had any problems yet. Still running an eighth. That's what he needs. That's what he's good at, keeping a car clean. Uh, which is funny because in early in his career he used to be known as Crash Johans because he was, well, terrible at doing that. And here he, there he comes into the pits in car number 12. And there is the hapless Claire Alcier. Went a whole nother lap limping around the track and Azure is swir going way wide to not run into the 98 car. And of course, and he doesn't have any brakes anyway, he throws it way off, off the track and I can't imagine that they're going to be terribly happy with Alcia. What is she doing? Um, as here is Kekkonen, who is still leading this race, but uh, as Brandon LaRoe, who we recently put a lap down. There's Luciano Savarol, uh a little bit further back. Kekkonen maintaining that gap uh, quite nicely, but uh, Ben Atkins is right there now. I wonder if Atkins has been off again. Wouldn't surprise me. Uh, anyways, Laroe, Brandon Laroe, the 39 car, being very, being very courteous, even if he was uh, slagged off earlier in the week by Yulian Asova for being uh, a bit of a dangerous driver. And well, that's an interesting way to let Luciano Salva all through, but doesn't damage his car. And uh, well, Brandon Laroe's finding innovative ways to let the leaders through. Good on him. Uh, so here is Alessandro Rossini in car number three, who has inherited third place. And given the dramas with Adrian Devereaux, I would imagine that Rossini is probably grinning ear to ear because this is going to really help his championship bid. Uh, Gaspar de Souza in car number 60 is running in fourth, Claveno in fifth, and there you see on the left side confirmation of that. And Devereaux right behind his, t uh, his teammate there. And there is the car in ninth place, Kevin Dwyer, no front end on that car. The Gessler team just pulled it all off and sent him back out. Melanie Claveno into the pits in car number two. That car has been a handful, uh, to say the least. Rossini in in car number three. This track, uh, the circuit also, given the length of the straightaways here, a lot of fuel. Be uh, uh, whoa, Luciano Savarol's really caught up to Kekkonen now. So I wonder if uh, Luciano Savarol has just been... Uh, a bit more aggressive with uh, fuel usage, especially since, um, well, he got stuck behind the uh, 64 for a while and figured he might as well save fuel, but you also wonder if, if um, well, Kekkonen's pace has dropped off just a little bit late in the run, where Savarol's really hasn't uh, fluctuated all that much, so I wonder if Kekkonen might have been the one doing a bit of fuel saving, and now Savarol, as you see right there, has gotten right by him. And here is Crash Davenport himself, and who's, oh, he's into the tire wall there, and I think, I think that might finally put him out, because I think that might have messed up the right, for, yep, Davenport's got all sorts of problems in the right front of that car, he's now out of his and everyone else's misery. Luciano Savarol and Arto Kakinen now pitting last time, and uh, there you see, as Chris Johans in the 12 car is still in the pit lane, They've got both the alert cars in, and they don't look like they're they're getting out of the pits anytime soon. Big disappointment for alert. They're looking very strong this weekend as Luciano Savarol great, uh, gets some great pit work. And Ashby's double stinting tires. The 55, Ashby is double stinting tires. There's only one other car in this race that's done that, and that's Morgan Le Fay. But uh, Morgan Le Fay, uh, uh, Morgan Le Fay copped a speeding penalty, and I think copped another one as well so Morgan LaFay's race has not exactly gone all that smooth as you see Adrian Devereaux challenging Gaspar de Souza oh this is very very close up through here Gaspar de Souza I think was a little bit worried about getting squeezed wide there's a huge bump right there that's uh, really been unsettling a lot of drivers really except these two guys uh, and here's Azuma Kazuyama who's got, he's up to 17th in the Maximus car and he's off course but I don't think he's going to lose 17th. I think he's going to be fine. Kazuyama, if he finishes where he is, that's going to be a great result because Maximus is staying out of trouble. They need that uh, because uh, money's getting really tight around that team, and there's some reports that he might be benched for another couple of races, especially if uh, someone comes along that can be a bit more um, 
helpful to the team on the uh, money side of things. Ian Cooper in car triple seven has had an error-free race, but he has his pace in this race has not been all that good. He's down to 15th. I uh, oh, that's not helping. That whoa, whoa, that's that's way way off in Ben Atkins territory. Ian Cooper, very frustrated with that car, I would imagine. Um, throwing it off in what I'm going to call Ben Atkins territory. They should name that wall after Atkins because I think he's hit it more than everyone else has all course this weekend. Um, and here is Alessandro Rossini and Adrian Devereaux. These are, I think, are the two title protagonists right here as it looks right now. Whoa, they're running each other very close. Rossini was going to squeeze Devereaux down, it looks like, but hard, fair racing between the two of them as Devereaux takes the place, but uh, I wonder if someone on Rossini... Oh! Rossini has gone off the track, it looks like. I wonder if someone got on Rossini's radio and told him uh, that Devereaux might be getting a penalty. Now, here's the Souza now. Just inherited fourth. Rossini's going to try to get that back from him. He only got two laps to go in this one. Rossini pokes his nose on the inside. Oh, oh no, no, no! You don't want to be doing that! No! Rossini hooks the back of the, of the Souza and around he goes! And that's going to be... Oh, Woodard's off again. Um, but look, but that's probably going to be a post-race time penalty for Alessandro Rossini. But in the meantime, despite Kekkonen really eating into his lead, Luciano Savaral is looking unchallenged. One corner to go. And it's that fast left-hander onto the main straightaway as Luciano Savaral wins in Quebec. He wins at Road Gatineau, and it's his second win of the year. Congratulations to Luciano Savaral and Lennart International for that. Kakinen kept him honest, and no surprises, Adrian Devereaux and Alessandro Rossini were both handed post-race time penalties, putting Zelda Ashby onto the podium in third. Uh, in fact, those penalties were announced uh, before podium ceremonies, so that, uh, needless to say, pit lane was a little bit of an awkward place to be right after uh, the checkered flag flew. Despite all of that madness, Adrian Devereaux still came home fifth. Uh, such was such were his uh, merits on track uh, that he was still four seconds clear of his teammate, uh, keeping in mind that, of course, Adrian Devereaux started 38th and Melanie Klavano started fifth. Um, Alessandro Rossini, of course, wound up seventh. That's still not a bad points day, but uh, uh, he, it could have been so much more. It could have been 40 points instead of only 28. Jacob Card, Kevin Dwyer, Kurt Pliskin round up the top 10. And that's actually a big round of applause to Kurt Pliskin for uh, managing to um, sort of undo the damage he did to his own car in the first corner. Morgan LeFay from 32nd to 12th, double stinting tires. I might point out that Ashby did likewise. But uh, LeFay uh, probably would have wound up inside the top five. Uh, but she, of course, got two speeding penalties throughout the course of the race. Davina Henton was the last car on the lead lap. And uh, I'd like to point out that Michael Humphreys and John Quackenbush are doing their independence trophy bids a lot of good with those points runs. Matthias Taub makes the most out of his pit strategy, winds up with one point for the Melrose Racing Team, and that's a confidence boost that they need. Uh, now we look at the Drivers' Championship after 12 races. Adrian Devereaux still leads, but 16 over Luciano Savaral. Clavino, Rossini, Ashby, Kekkonen, Bates, uh, and uh, Leonid Roderick could all take the points lead at after the next race. Of course, Roderick would need to win the race and get five bonus points, and Devereaux would need to get none. Uh, so with that being said, uh, Kevin Dwyer, Gaspar D'Souza are still in with uh, a legitimate shot, but from there it gets really marginal because... Uh, that is a pretty big gap between uh, Ga Gaspar D'Souza in 10th and Davina Henton in 11th. Uh, much the situation that D'Souza found himself in last year where he was um, sort of just clinging to a championship bid, except uh, his hopes are a lot more real this year than they were last year, let's be honest. Um, you got a good battle for 11th in points between Henton, Anderson, Nasova, Woodard, Pliskin, uh, kind of Ian Cooper. David Krikorian has been very fast in all three of his outings this year. Kuznetsov, Card, and um, Raketa, maybe, but uh, Carlos Raketa and Jacob Carter, I think, more invested in something else called Rookie of the Year. And something else that's captured uh, a lot of interest, the Independence Trophy. 
And Michael Humphreys currently leads the Independence Trophy, and he's still got a race to go. So he's looking pretty good, and that's the only team, of course, that has won the Independence Trophy uh, in the past that's still competing for it. But we still have three special events to go and several more races to be run. And the next race on the TM Master Cup Series calendar is one of the classics, the Round of Quincy at the Grand Detour of Western Illinois.